Good morning. We're going to pick up our reading with chapter four, and it is the cave and the BFG. So we have our book, we have our chapter. I have a little sketch on this chapter. And today, as I read, I want you to focus on something called simile. Made us a little sign here. So hopefully, you can see it. And a simile is a figure of speech involving the comparison of one thing to another thing of a different kind. And what that means is we are comparing two things that aren't the same. So our example here is if I was describing somebody as as brave as a lion, or if I described my glasses as dark as the night. There's just two things that we're comparing that just are not alike. So as I read today, what I want you to do is I want you to think back to simile. And where does our author Roald Dahl use simile in this chapter? It's in a couple different places. And you have, if you have to go back and listen again before you comment, I suggest you do that because it's in here, I promise. So we're watching and we're listening for simile as Mr. Reed reads today. We have the cave. The giant ran on and on, but now a curious change took place in his way of running. He seemed suddenly to go into a higher gear. Faster and faster he went, and soon he was traveling at such a speed that the landscape became blurred. The wind stung Sophie's cheeks. It made her eye water. It wiped her head, it whipped her head back and forth and whistled in her ears. She could no longer feel the giant's feet touching the ground. She had a weird sensation that they were flying. It was impossible to tell whether they were over the land or sea. This giant had some sort of magic in his legs. The wind rushing against Sophie's face became so strong that she had to duck down again into the blanket to prevent her head from being blown away. Was it really possible that they were going to cross an ocean? It certainly felt that way to Sophie. She crouched in the blanket and listened to how the howling of the wind. It went on for what seemed like hours. Then all at once, the wind stopped its howling. The pace began to slow down. Sophie could feel a giant's feet pounding once again over the earth. She poked her head up out of the blanket to have a look. They were in a country. A thick country of thick forests and rushing rivers. The giant had definitely slowed down and was now running more normally. Lost my place. Let me find it again. Although normal was a silly word to use describing a galloping giant. He leaped over a dozen rivers. He went rattling through a great forest, then down into a valley and up over a range of hills as bare as concrete. And soon he was galloping over a desolate wasteland that was not quite of this earth. The ground was flat and pale yellow. Great lumps of blue rock were scattered around. And dead trees stood everywhere like skeletons. The mood had long since disappeared, and now the dawn was breaking. Sophie, still peering out from the blanket, saw suddenly ahead of her a great craggy mountain. The mountain was dark blue, and all around, all around it, the sky was gushing and glistening with light. Bits of pale gold were flying among delicate frosty white flakes of cloud, and over to one side the rim of the morning sun was coming up red as blood. Right beneath the mountain, the giant stopped. He was puffing mightily. His great chest was heaving in and out. He paused to catch his breath. Directly in front of them, lying against the side of the mountain, Sophie could see a massive round stone. It was as big as a house. The giant reached out and rolled the stone to one side as easily as, as easily as if it had been a football. And now, where the stone had been, there appeared a vast black hole. The hole was so large, the giant didn't even have to duck his head as he went in. He strode into the black hole, still carrying Sophie in one hand, the trumpet and the suitcase in the other. As soon as he was inside, he stopped and turned around and rolled the great stone back into place so that the entrance to his secret cave was completely hidden from the outside. Now that the entrance had been sealed up, there was not a glint of light inside the cave. All was black. 
Sophie felt herself being lowered to the ground. Then the giant let go, let go of the blanket completely. His footsteps moved away. Sophie sat there in the dark, shivering with fear. He is getting ready to eat me, she told herself. He will probably eat me raw, just as I am. Perhaps he will boil me first. Or he will have me fried. He will drop me like a rasher of bacon into some gigantic frying pan sizzling with fat. A blaze of light suddenly lit up the whole place. Sophie blinked and stared. She saw an enormous cavern with a high rocky roof. The walls on either side were lined with shelves and on the shelves there stood row upon row of glass jars. There were jars everywhere. They were piled up in the corners. They filled every nook and cranny of the cave. In the middle of the floor, there was a table 12 feet high and a chair to match. The giant took off his black cloak and hung it against the wall. Sophie saw that under the cloak, he was wearing a sort of collarless shirt and a dirty old leather waistcoat that didn't seem to have any buttons. His trousers were faded in green and were far too short in the legs. On his bare feet, he was wearing a pair of ridiculous sandals that for some reason had holes cut along each side with a large hole at the end where his toe stuck out. Sophie, crouching on the floor of the cave in her nightie, gazed back at him through thick steel-rimmed glasses. She was trembling like a leaf in the wood, in the wind. Let me read that again. She was trembling like a leaf in the wind, and a finger of ice was running up and down the length of her spine. Ha! shouted the giant, walking forward and rubbing his hands together. What has... Us got here, his booming voice rolled around the walls of the cave like a burst of thunder. Hint, hint, that last part. Let me read it again. I'll read the whole thing. Ha, shouted the giant, walking forward and rubbing his hands together. What has us got here? His booming voice rolled around the walls of the cave like a burst of thunder. So, remember, we are trying to figure out what and where our author put our figure of speech simile. So remember, a simile is a figure of speech involving the comparison of one thing to another thing of a different kind. So our example here is brave as a lion. Where do you see that? I especially want you to focus on that last page because there are two in there. So I want you to try to find them in that chapter. If you find any anywhere else, make sure to comment below. Everybody have a great day. I will see you later.